Hey friends, welcome back to Ozark Outdoor Brewing and happy brew year. We're gonna kick things off right this year today as we brew up Northern Brewers Blue Loon Extract Beer Kit. This is their copycat recipe of the ever popular Blue Moon Beer. I love that beer, my wife loves it. I'm sure many of you enjoy it as well. I've actually got a friend that enjoys that beer so much when he was upgraded to first class on a 30 minute flight, he asked the waitress to bring him as many blue moons as she could in the next 30 minutes. She did exactly that and he called Uber when he landed at the airport. So come along with me today as we brew Northern Brewers Blue Loon Extract Kit. I've got the recipe kit on the table here behind me. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and show you what we're working with here. So this kit has everything that I'm gonna need. I've got two extract syrup kits here, both 3.15 pounds, the gold malt and the wheat malt. I've got my honk, the German holler towel, the uh, sweet orange peels, and the coriander seed as well. I've also got some DME, dry malt extract, the Bavarian wheat, that'll go in as well. So the instructions say to crush or grind the coriander seed. I don't have a coffee grinder or a spice grinder, so don't have a uh, pestle, uh, mortar and pestle either. So what you're gonna see is the poor man's mortar and pestle today. I've just got this uh, measuring little cup and a tequila shot glass. I'm hoping I'll be able to use that to crush up this coriander. We're gonna see how this goes. All right, we're gonna call that good. Right, wrong, or indifferent. So we've got two and a half gallons ready to go, already in the pot. Let me go ahead and kick off the Dark Star burner, light this thing up, and we'll bring this up to boil. I'm sure you guys have noticed it already, but I'd be remiss if I didn't point out my new Ozark Outdoor Brewing sign. Big shout out to my boy, Frankie Fresh, follow him on Instagram, Niners for Life 80 And hit him up if you need any custom sign work done as well. This is pretty, pretty slick. Frank, you the man. While this is starting to come up to a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and start sanitizing a few things that I'm gonna need. Got my bucket full of sanitizer here, ported just into this nice little plastic container here. I've got my uh, plastic tubing. Uh, my bung, my airlock, and the cap for it. So I've got that filled up with sanitizer. Again, the few little bits and pieces in there. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my howler towel hops in there. I have no idea if I'm even saying that right. You guys correct me down in the comments. All right, friends, with only two and a half gallons, that really didn't take all that long to get up to a boil. So I'm gonna go ahead and, whoa, that went the wrong way. I don't know if you can see that or not. The flame shot out the side. We are at 212 degrees. That means it's time to add the liquid malt extract. So I've already got these opened up. We'll take the first one that I picked up here. This is the wheat malt extract. We're gonna go ahead and stir this in at a very gentle rate. Ah, uh, yeah. There's that delicious smell I remember from last time. Ah, it's fantastic, it's wonderful. All right, time to add the second bottle of liquid malt extract. This is the gold malt extract. Here we go. All right, last addition for now is the DME, dry malt extract. This is Bavarian wheat. It says uh, dried malt, Bavarian wheat, dried malt extract, three degree love bond ingredients, malted wheat, malted barley, and water, one pound. So I'm gonna go ahead and Get this package open. Just as stupidly as I could, apparently. All right. I have a feeling that this is gonna be a little janky just because this is a powder. I've got a lot of uh, condensation coming up here out of this, so this may not go smoothly. Uh, I'm gonna try to take it very slow so it doesn't clump up. I'll probably be stirring this for a bit, so Let's see how it goes. Okay, I think I've got that pretty well stirred in. 
I was a little bit worried about the dry malt extract and it clumping, um, but I think I've stirred it vigorously enough and for long enough that I've probably got any of those clumps broken down. Um, to be honest, I kind of feel a little bit like Tom Hanks here in the movie Castaway, right? He has made fire. I have made wort. This is wort. This is the precursor to beer. We've got to bring this back up to a boil. We've got to add our hops, the other additions. Then the yeast goes to work to ferment and make this into Blue Loon. I have made wort! Wort did you say? <laughs> you wort kidding. Oi, what are you doing? I bet many of you are asking, what is wrong with him? All of the malt extract has been added, both the liquid and the dry versions. Now it's time to bring this back up to boil. Once we get there, time to add the hops. Friends, we are right there at the boiling point. This is gonna start bubbling up and boiling here any second. So now's the time where I'm ready to get my hops, get ready to add those. Whenever we do actually start boiling, I can kind of see it right there. I didn't do a good job last time of showing you guys what these hops look like. Um, and I'd like to do that this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it now as we're starting to come up to a boil. And then I'm gonna give you a shot just so you can kind of see what these hops look like. They are just pellets, hop pellets. Uh, and they are, I believe it's, this is a one ounce packet. Now that it's there, I can see just like last time, right? The foam is starting to come up. So two things, right? Reduce the heat and stir. Both of those will reduce the amount of foam that you have coming up here. Yeah, that was hot. Here comes the foam. I was ready for it this time. And there we go. Nice, easy. Of course, I'm only dealing with two and a half gallons of water this time versus a full five. So the hops are in. Let's get our 60 minute timer going. Start a timer for 60 minutes. There we go. Timer is set for an hour. This is at a nice, easy boil. I may bring the temperature down just a little bit, just so it's an easy boil. One thing also that you'll notice is once the, the foam dies down, you've got this ring around the top. What I like to do is just kind of go in there and, and spoon that off back down into the beer, right? That's a lot of your hops. That's a lot of your flavor. Um, I could be completely wrong on this. Uh, it may not make a difference at all, but I try to throw a little bit of the hot liquid up there and pull as much of that down into the beer so I get that hop flavor. So I've got it to a boil. I've added my hops. 60 minute timer has started. Now I can start doing a few other things so I'm ready for the next steps. Friends, I actually learned a lot of things during my very first brew day. One of those was with my wort chiller. If you remember from the first video and the first beer that I did, I just had my wort chiller hooked up to my outdoor spigot and just had that water running through it and then draining right outside the garage. That didn't work very effectively. Uh, the water wasn't cold enough, wasn't down to where it needed to be to cool down the wort fast enough. So with that in mind, one of the additions to the brew house is a recirculation system for the wort chiller. I've got a pond pump down there rated at 300 gallons per hour. That's hooked up to the inlet side of the wart chiller, the outlet side will feed directly back into this cooler, which I'll continually fill up with ice and cold water. The initial water that comes out, I'll drain outside because that's gonna be extremely hot. This is also the first time that I've added my wart chiller with that recirculation system. So this could be a bit of a cluster clock. No worries, I've got a bunch of bags of ice sitting outside right now because it's about 35 degrees outside. I'll be able to bring those in, add them to the water in the cooler, 
and keep that water cooler and cooler and cooler to continue dropping the temperature of the wort. Friends, here we are down to the last five minutes of the boil. This is the time where I get to add the coriander that you saw earlier. Just gonna go ahead and sprinkle that in right now. Additionally, I get to add half an ounce of sweet orange peel. Now, what I've heard from a lot of people that have reviewed this beer is that they didn't get enough orange flavor out of the beer. So, instead of a half ounce, right, wrong, or indifferent, I'm just gonna add the whole ounce. And see how that does. All right, friends, count it with me. Three, two, one. Ah, oh, what a letdown you didn't hear it, it's vibrating. Ah, oh, I'm an idiot. All right, so the brew is done. We'll close that down, turn the propane off as well. We've reached 60 minutes. Brew is finished with the 60 minute boil. It's time to turn on the wart chiller. First thing I wanna do, I I've got a little paper towel here. I know this is done. This is hot. Don't pick this up by your fingers. You've been warned. Time to take the lid and cover all of that as best that I can. Now it's time to plug up this Frankenstein monster that I've got here with the recirculation pump and cool water and see how long this takes. Friends, wow. What a difference that recirculation pump made. I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. 22 minutes, 39 seconds. That is insane to me because of the experience that I had the last time. Over three hours for this to get from boiling down to at least 70 degrees. Now then with the recirculation pump and into the cold water, 22 minutes, 39 seconds. All right, wort has been chilled. Now then, we can, a couple of things, remove the thermometer. No longer need that, bad boy. And the wort chiller itself. I'm gonna let that drain out just a little bit of what it's hanging on between the coils. So remember, this is only two and a half gallons of wort. So that's gonna require more water into the fermentation vessel to kind of top that off. So before I start the transfer, let me go ahead and fill this thing up with at least two and a half gallons of cool water. I'll add two and a half gallons of wort, and then I'll get to see what my burn off rate was and how much more water I need to add to get to that five gallon mark. Two and a half gallons of water here in the primary fermenter. Started with two and a half gallons here. I know a lot evaporated off. Now then I'm gonna transfer the wort into the fermenter. I'm gonna set the wort up here and hook all the connections up to get it down into the fermentation vessel. Jeez, I feel like I'm playing Jenga just a little bit. I'm gonna fill it up with sanitizer. That goes into this connection here. Want to make sure now that anything that touches this wart is 100% completely sanitized. Everything that we've done before was sanitized by the heat of the boil. But now then that the wart has cooled down to the temperature that we need, everything has to be sanitized. Fermentation vessel has been sanitized. The lid is sanitized. Sanitizing. All my little bits and pieces and parts are sanitized that I'm about to hook up. So everything's sanitized now. I've got uh, my makeshift Jenga tower, uh, which will gravity feed wart into the fermentation chamber. So the first thing that I did, sanitize the valve, the inlet piece there. That's gonna connect to this tubing. Go ahead and stick that down in there. This connects to the wart. All right, that took a second, but I got it should be able to open this valve and have wort dropping down into the fermentation vessel. This is the point you're okay to introduce oxygen. In fact, you want oxygen at this point. You want to aerate your wort as it drops into your fermentation vessel. Let's see how this goes. 
And there we go. I'm not even convinced yet that I'm going to bottle this beer. That was such a pain in the ass. I may actually have a kegging system, at least one keg. That way, my fermentation chamber can be dual purpose. We'll ferment my beer, and then I can crank that temperature down and hold a keg, even if it's with just a picnic tap. That's pretty much pulled everything off of there that I can. So we had about a half gallon burn off during the boil process. Makes complete sense. I've actually got some cool water right here off camera. I'm gonna pour this in until I reach that five gallon mark. And there we go. A full five gallons of Northern Brewers Blue Loon beer. So the wort has been aerated at this point. This time I went with the Omega Yeast. It is the West Coast Ale OYL 004. Not 007 for you Brits that are watching, although I do appreciate that. That goes into the sanitizer. I'm going to remove the top and set that down in the sanitizer as well that I've got here. Now then, it's time to pitch the yeast. Yeast is pitched, lid gets put back on. I already have the bung in there from earlier. Now that I've got my airlock, I will go ahead and fill that up with sanitizer. That goes right straight down into the bung. And that's it. Blue Loon beer has been brewed. Yeast has been added. It's in the fermentation vessel. Now then, time to add it to the brand new fermentation temperature controlled chamber all right you guys now it's time to add this to the fermentation chamber i've got this lifted up and in one of the things that i definitely want to make sure that i'm doing is recording this temperature not the ambient temperature so i've got just the bottom part of an old koozie here and the temperature probe of my thermostat. Figure out the best way to add this. So that's the temperature reading that I'm getting. Wanna make sure I'm not getting ambient temperature from the freezer. I think this will probably do the job. We'll see how that goes in a couple of days. I don't know. Nope. Mm, friends, that's a wrap on brew day. I had such a tremendous time bringing you along with me on this journey. Thank you for the likes and the comments. If you're not already, please consider subscribing. That always helps us out. And smash that bell so you get a notification every time we post a video here on Ozark Outdoor Brewing. Until next time, drink responsibly.